the Lakers dropped game one to the, to the Portland Trail Blazers. I already called that. I called that right out the gate. I felt that that, that could have been a possibility. I was just like, the way that the Blazers have been playing, I could see them, I could see them winning game one. I said that. I could see the Lakers having rust, dropping game one, and after that, they sweep through. I'm like, Nostradamus. However, there's like one thing that people are like kind of like overlooking about the whole game one loss in the playoffs. With LeBron James led teams, there is always a sense of emotional turmoil. You saw that when he was on the Miami Heat, where him and Mario Chalmers got into it. Mario Chalmers told him, stop acting like a bitch. LeBron was chewing you out and then apologized to you for it afterwards. What were you right about and he was wrong about? Like, you know, I felt like he was complaining too much about what was going on. I'm like, yo, you the, you the star player of the team. Like, stop acting like a bitch and let's just play basketball. And anybody that knows Bron knows that word bitch, he doesn't like, you know? He said, you a star, let's ball, you know, stop acting like a bitch. And that that sparked a, 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 a fight right there. Remember when he was on Cleveland, he used to always do these cryptic tweets about guys like Kevin Love and stuff like that. The thing that we have to really rein in and dial in about LeBron James is there's always going to be some kind of emotional situation going on. He even said that with Chris Hainsworth. He said there was some stuff going on that nobody knew about, and he actually clarify what he was talking about. Earlier this month, mm -hmm. you were asked about, you know, the team struggles during yeah. his restart. Yeah. And you had a comment saying something along the lines of, well, there are things that are going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. that I don't want to talk about. Yeah. And please clarify <laughs> what you were referring well, to when you said I, I, that. Well, I can just tell you this. It has uh, nothing to do with, with, with our team. Intricate and now I might tell you, you know, I might tell you when the cameras ain't on. Uh, but, uh, I'll hold you it has nothing to do with the Lakers and, and, our, and our group. Our group has been there. So, that within itself tells you where I'm about to go with this. LeBron James and the Lakers announced <laughs> after they get out of the series of Portland, very cocky, whatever the case is, which is fine. I don't I don't care about that. But after they got out of the series of Portland, they're gonna wear all black and put the eight and the twenty-four on their logo on their jerseys to represent Kobe. Alright? Fine. Nipsey Hustle's birthday was like the other day. And LeBron James had his Slauson Crenshaw inspired shoes. That's another one. That's another one. So first he was riding off the wave of emotion with Kobe. Then they're thinking about Nipsey Hustle, the emotional Nipsey Hustle. Then everything gets triple compounded with make they have a Make America Great Again um, hats, but MAGA inspired hats. But where they did change this and Make America Great and you know, get justice for the against those cops that killed Breonna Taylor. So you had three things riding on that game before the game, which took everybody's focus off the game. To me, you don't go five for 32 from three because you had a lot of rest and you were waiting for the playoffs to start and you're waiting on playing. It was something else, which is the emotional side, which is what I'm which is what people just don't really understand about, like, LeBron James. Part of the reason why LeBron James went back to Cleveland and won, and won the championship is because Pat Riley told him it would be the biggest mistake of his career if he left Miami. He told him that he couldn't win a championship in Cleveland. And what did he do to prove him wrong? Hey, he's a kid from Akron. People told him he was never going to be great or whatever the case is. He put the chosen one on his back. LeBron James thrives off emotion. He thrives off emotion. And you got to understand one thing about emotions. They can help you or they can help get the best of you. And in that situation there, LeBron had a triple-double. Anthony Davis, he had like 28-11, but he, he was horrible. He was like, he went 8 for 24, shot 30%. The emotion that I was riding and the way that they carried in the motion, it wasn't focused on the game. It was focused on everything other than the game. That's why everybody else played terrible. I can't tell you, they, the Lakers shot the second worst three-point percentage in NBA history playoffs. I can't tell you when that's going to happen again. And that's kind of the thing that I'm more relieved about everything is like, Lakers aren't going to shoot that horribly again. 
Portland shot horribly as well. They shot 30%, 30% from three, like 30% from uh, the, the, for, for the field goal percentage. They didn't play well. They just hit a couple more threes than the Lakers. You see what I'm saying? If they made a couple threes down the stretch, which helped the game. But this is the problem that I have with LeBron James-led teams. The emotion doesn't get checked and channeled into the game. It's like everywhere else but the game. And the only time the players are going to play right is if LeBron James is going crazy. If he's not going crazy, if he's like getting like very passive and he's packed, like there's a lot of times he had Trent Jr. on him. He didn't want to like back him down. Or when he did back him down, he was looking to pass automatically. That's not going to help. He needs to get a couple of big dunks. He needs to hit a couple of big threes. I'll get some and ones, and that gets everybody else going. And that's the kind of emotion that I need to see from the Lakers. I don't want to see any emotion about, you know, and, and God bless the dead, you know, Kobe and everything. I respect that. I love it. But when you're when you're leading with that, and you know how Kobe would think, Kobe Kobe wouldn't. Kobe would basically just do it. He wouldn't tell you what he's gonna do. He would just have his inspired stuff. He wouldn't be telling you like, there wouldn't be like a pre-announcement about it or nothing. And that's what I mean. Like it changed, he, LeBron changes your organization because everything is an announcement. Everything is a, is a deal. It's not just done. You know, I remember when Kobe wore the snakeskin Jordans and the league find him. He was, he didn't say, I'm going to wear these snakeskin Jordans. He just wore them. Like that's, and that's kind of the difference. Like with Kobe, if Kobe was still alive, he would just be like, you let LeBron know, like, all right, if you want to win the chip, just win the don't don't say you're doing it for this. Just do it, and then afterward, you let everybody know where it came from. And I feel like that's kind of where the emotions are not getting channeled. I'm just taking it from a different perspective. Everybody wants to talk about Dame, and I love Dame, and I think Dame is excellent, and I feel like he's finally getting his just due in the bubble and everything like that. But, but also, I want to caveat that with, don't blame Dame if, if they, they lose the next four games or they lose in six or they lose the series. Like, to me, with Portland, Portland's a different ball game because they don't play no defense. It's a different ball game. They don't play any defense, and they're expected for Dame to hit from the logo every single time. And that's a low percentage shot. He, he hits it a high clip, but at the end of the day, if you're taking a lot of low percentage shots and the opponent takes higher percentage shots, you're, you're going to see what the deal is. And, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't expect the Lakers to go 5 for 32 from 3 again, 16%. I don't expect that again. So if that's what you're banking on for the series, good luck. That's, a, that's all I'm going to say. I, I like that guy from taking. Good luck. Who's Junction? Who's Me Hoopla? Like, comment, subscribe.